Leagues 4, Trailblazer Reloaded, is less than a month away, and Jagex have been pretty secretive this time around. Basically straight up declining to give us a task and relic list. And I understand why. Let's keep some mystery, some excitement, sure. But for those of you who like to be prepared, for those of you who go in with a rough plan, or maybe you just want to get ahead of everyone else, this video is for you. I'm going to start by covering some money-making methods in the League's game mode, followed by talking about an example step-by-step -step starting strategy that you can use. And lastly, we're going to talk about your first region unlock and what common mistakes you want to avoid. Now I'm going to preface this money making topic by saying that your key to fast progression is not about how much money you have. It's about getting tasks done quickly, but you will need some starting cash. So I'm focusing on Mistelin and Karamja at the start of the league. First and most obvious choice for money is the stronghold of security. Sure, you have to go down, you know, three floors of basically promising Jagex that you won't give your password out to the first homeless person you see on the street. But once you've done that, you get a free 10k. Early game quests are also a quick way to make enough money to see you over your first hurdles. Cutting and fletching oak and willow logs into unstrung bows can be out or even sold back to general stores for a good bit of early game cash. Crafting is also an option to make money, but comes with a few caveats. There's no way to tan hides in Mistlilin and Karamja, and getting your hands on jewellery moulds is especially long-winded. That being said, the Varrock Westbank does have a gold bar and gold necklace spawn. Birdhouse runs are also a great source of money. From the bird nests, you'll get plenty of jewellery to turn straight into gold. And listen, I know we're talking about small numbers here, but at the start of leagues in an Iron Man game mode, that's going to make a difference. I mentioned the ham storeroom in a previous video, but... Alright. Death to the Dorgashan requires Asgarnia. Fuck! So, we'll have to say goodbye to this method. Okay. When you ask any RuneScape player how to make money, they'll tell you to go do Slayer. Or just, I don't know kill something. But just be wary of your early game mage and range resources. You don't want to bottleneck your progression by using all of these trying to safe spot a monster for a little bit of money. So don't fall into that trap. Just kill the monsters that get you the lead tasks and move on. Beginner and easy clue scrolls are also worth a mention. We've had confirmation that clue scrolls will only give you steps in the regions that you've unlocked. Don't sleep on your clues if you do get them early. And of course, if you're going to alk anything in the first place, you're gonna need nature runes. A good source of early nature runes and alkable drops are the tree spirits in the Enchanted Valley, accessible right from the get-go through the Fairy Ring system. The other way to get a good amount of nature runes is by crafting them yourself, although pursuing 44 rune crafting early on can feel like quite a detour. And guys, if you're really desperate, this guy Luthus wants me to fill his crate with bananas. He ships them over to Port Serim, probably makes a killing, and I'm going to see a 30 GP cut. Where do I sign up? Most importantly, we still don't know what all of the relics are. Historically, we've seen relics that give generous amounts of gold from collecting Marks of Grace, extra money when alking, or even doubling the loot from pickpocketing. So we'll have to wait and see what takes their place this time around. Moving on. Let's talk about an early game task strategy. Jagex have said, Despite our dire warnings, some of you might still be planning to dig out the old pace bin and fast track your way to the highest relic tier. Well, think again. We're revamping tasks and relics from the ground up. So it goes without saying that you will need to adapt the next parts of this guide based on what those new tasks might be. I think it's safe to say that there's not loads of room to rebalance or revamp the easy tasks. After all, they need to be easy and accessible from the get-go, most importantly. You know, things like cut these trees down, fletch them into bows, do this quest, run a mindless amount of agility laps. I'm 
not doing a great job at selling this, but you, you get my point. Tasks like this will be our go-to for the new league's format, which favors numbers of tasks completed over total points. This is so that you can just unlock more regions quicker, speeding up your progression and options available to you. Of course, I'm not dismissing league points because you still need those to unlock your next relic tier. Now, how do we incorporate this into a strategy? Let's go through a step-by-step -step example of this that can be completed by doing a sort of lap from Lumbridge around to Varrock and back. It's an adaptation of Zulu's original Trailblazer starting strategy, link to that in the description. So, upon spawning into Lumbridge, you want to head straight for the quest star icon for Mistelin Mystery. This quest has no requirements and will jump you straight up to 16 crafting. On your way over there, you might be able to tick off two or three other tasks. For example, pickpocket someone, enter Death's Domain, catch a shrimp, or even mine a tin or copper ore. Once you've completed Mistle and Mystery, you're gonna wanna go catch yourself a sardine at the nearby fishing spot. Hold on to this because it's for the Gertrude's cat quest that we'll get into soon. Now head to the Lumbridge Bank and start Rune Mysteries on your way. You're gonna wanna bank everything except some coins, some combat gear, some food, and your Draymon staff. Make a stop at the nearby general store and buy yourself two buckets and a pot. Then head up to Draenor, grab an egg on the way, as well as filling up your buckets of milk, and fill your pot with flour at the mill nearby. Again, keep your eye on the task list, because it may be a task to kill a goblin, a chicken, or even bury some bones that you can tick off on the way. While we're in Draenor, you might want to do some agility laps for a task, but whatever you do, make sure you pick up the Vampire Slayer quest before heading over to the Wizard's Tower to progress Rune Mysteries. Now we're going to do a 180 and head back towards Varrock. Do the Stronghold of Security for your free 10k and start Gertrude's cap, grabbing a Dougal Leaf on the way past. Now you can use the Varrock West Bank to bank any excess items. The only things you really want to be holding on to are your axe, coins, Dougal Leaf, raw sardine and bucket of milk. Make sure you've got 21 free inventory spaces. Head towards the Varrock Museum and progress Gertrude's cat along the way. Do the natural history quiz for level 20 Slayer and Hunter. And just opposite here, start the Daddy's Home mini quest. From here, you want to complete Daddy's Home, which involves running up and down between the sawmill and Old Man Yarlow's house a couple times. While you're up at the sawmill, don't forget to progress Gertrude's cat. This is gonna get you 20 construction, a free player owned house or 1K coins, and a lot of free construction resources that we're gonna use later. Progress Rune Mysteries at Aubrey in Varrock, and then spend the rest of your money on a cheap mage setup. Some mind runes, some air runes, and if you can afford it, a Staff of Fire. Progress the Vampire Slayer quest, complete Gertrude's Cat. This is also a good time to consider completing Vampire Slayer although you may need to get a few magic levels before you do that. Head back to the Wizard's Tower and complete Rune Mysteries. All right, I'd consider this the halfway point. So if you're still with me, congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. You're efficient and sweaty. Let's move on. We're gonna be heading back to Lumbridge, but before we do, have a look at the task list. Is there anything you can tick off on the way? Using the air talisman to locate an altar, entering Xanarus through the Lumbridge Swamp, or maybe just using the home teleport. Tick off what you can and head back to complete Cook's Assistant, because next we're gonna head to the Enchanted Valley. Safe spot the tree spirits here until you run out of runes. Hopefully you can bag yourself a rune axe and a good amount of nature runes. And it goes without saying, but use those nature runes. Get yourself into sweat mode and start alking things while you're running around. Use some of that sweet, sweet alk money to buy yourself some hop seeds suitable for birdhouse traps in Drainer Village. And while you're here, it's a great spot to tick off the woodcutting, fletching, or any fire making tasks from the oak and willow trees. Our next focus are birdhouse runs. Use your Karamja teleport and go to the charter ships here to buy yourself a glass blowing pipe, a bucket of sand and soda ash. While you're in Karamja, go to the bank and get out all your construction supplies. You're gonna need level 25 construction and this is to make a crafting table too. You can upgrade to this from the crafting table one by using your bucket of sand and soda ash on a furnace to make a molten glass. Now that the crafting table two is set up, the only other thing you need are four steel bars. The supply pack from Daddy's Home should have you covered. Turn these four steel bars into four clockwork using the crafting table two, and then make your way back over to Varrock. Now I'm assuming that with the automatic quest completions like Dragon Slayer and more, that we'll have enough kudos to start doing museum finds straight away. If that's the case, consider doing this to get your dig site pendant early on. If not, then you can come back to it later. Head over to Fossil Island with your hammer, chisel, seeds, logs, 
and clockwork. Unlock the full mushroom transportation system and do your first birdhouse run. Regardless of what Jagex do with the tasks, this is just going to give you such a head start. A lot of well-rounded experience and an opportunity to tick off a lot of other tasks on your way around. It's a good tip to do your birdhouse runs as close to cooldown as possible for the seeds, passive XP, jewelry, or even money. And this should tide you over until you pick your first region. Let's talk about that next. Your first region choice is really important. It's fair to say that you can find success with any choice you make, but there are some regions that will present more difficulty than others if chosen first. Regions like Fremenic, Mauritania, and the Wilderness have content geared more towards higher combat levels, and their skilling utilities are fewer and farther apart from each other. Compare that with places that I'm going to class as utility regions, as Garnia, Kandarin, and Karend. These three offer a little bit of everything. Good skilling methods for a range of skills, PVM opportunities across all combat levels, and they're typically easier to navigate around too. This isn't a new strategy by any means, but if one of your three region choices is going to include one of those utility regions, consider picking it first. It might not have the most exciting content, but it will propel your progression with a typically easier task list and faster skilling methods. I mentioned earlier that you want to focus on completing as many tasks as possible over total league points accrued. This is great for unlocking your first region, but you'll want to shift your focus soon after. This is because the passive league XP multiplier is tied to your relic tier, starting at five times and historically reaching as high as 16 times. So once you've got that first utility region unlocked, it's time to look back over the task list. There are usually some pretty quick high point earners that can boost you towards your next relic tier. And getting that next XP multiplier or relic is usually going to outweigh unlocking your second second or third region. Think of the quest reward XP multiplying as well. And with all that being said, Leaks is meant to be a fun game mode. So if you want to throw all of this out the window and just go do forestry with your friends until you get 99 woodcut, then do it. Knock yourself out. But let's be honest, you don't have any friends. I love the sense of community around leagues. So if you've got a strategy you want to share or any secret tips, put them in the comments for everyone else to see. If Jagex do give us a bit more information on the relics, I will be talking about it. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Leagues is out on November the 15th, so I will see you all then. Don't forget to subscribe. <clears throat> My throat, what the f was that? I just fucking choked on a fly.